Hello, my name is Adam Daniels with the Santee Fire Department. I'm with the Small Engines Division. Today we're going to talk about starting procedures for the 2171 and 2172 Cutter's Edge Chainsaws. So in this video we're going to talk about a couple different things. First we're going to talk about cold starting procedures and how to start it when it's cold. Second we're going to start talk about warm starting procedures. We're also going to talk about clearing a flood on the saw if it does get flooded. Alright, so today we have the 2171 Cutter's Edge saw. The 2171 and 2172 are ex exact same starting procedures. With the 2171 and 2172 we have a ready to start. We leave it in the ready to start position. The ready to start position is choke out, compression relief out. The reason we leave the compression release out is to allow for more compression in the cylinder. If it is, if it is too difficult to pull, you, you can use the compression release button but normally we leave it out with the choke out. With the choke, engaging the choke also engages the throttle lock. So to get into the starting procedures, this is a cold saw. Cold saw means it has not been started yet. With a cold saw, like I said, you wanna have the choke out and we, we have it in the ready start position with the, with the compression releases out. Also, we want to have the chain break off. So to start the saw, you're gonna leave the saw on the ground when it's cold because you get a more accurate pull that way. You're gonna put your foot on the foot plate. If you notice it has a wider edge on this side, so you wanna put your foot on the foot plate, grasp the D-handle and pull it towards your chest. You don't wanna pull away from you because it's got a shorter rope. Pull it towards your chest and pull it a max of three times or to hear a pop. Ready? So we heard the pop on the first pull. So once we hear that pop, we're gonna push the choke in. Choke is in, but we do not want to touch the throttle. Touching the throttle disengages that throttle lock. So with the throttle lock engaged, we have it in the high idle position. After that, step back on the handle, grasp the D handle, and pull until it starts. I let it remain in the high idle position for approximately five to 10 seconds for the saw to warm up. Then I grasp, Grab the throttle, give it a couple quick full throttle cycles, and now the saw is ready to use. All right, now we're gonna talk about starting a warm saw. A warm saw means you've already gone through the cold saw starting procedures. The saw has been used or the saw has been ran and the engine is still warm. So the difference between the warm saw and the cold saw is you do not use the choke. Although, you do pull the choke out and push it back in to ensure that throttle lock is engaged. Do not touch the throttle after pulling the choke out and pushing it back in, because again, it'll disengage that throttle lock. And I'm ensuring my compression release is off, or in the out position, and my chain brake is off. So I'm gonna pull the pull cord until the saw starts. Once the saw starts, again, I'm gonna let it be in that high idle position for about five to 10 seconds, and then give it some full throttle strokes. Next, we're gonna talk about our weekly running procedures. For weekly running procedures, what we wanna do, we wanna start the saw, let it remain in the high idle position for approximately one minute. Once it's done in the high idle position, you're gonna grab the throttle, give it full throttle strokes until it clears the blue smoke or until it's running efficiently and then shut it off right away. We don't want to let it idle at all because that's when the carbon and the oil deposits build up on the plug and cause it to foul more readily. So again, we want it to run for about a minute on the full or in the high idle position and then run it through a couple full throttle strokes and then shut it down. And I'll go over that right now. All right, now that we have the saw torn apart, I just want to take this opportunity to let you guys know and show you where the throttle lock is because it's not an external, it's an internal feature on these saws and why we don't touch the throttle after we disengage the choke. So if you see this little black piece that's moving right here, it moves up and engages with the throttle right there. Now it's engaged with the throttle. When I push the choke back in, that remains engaged with the throttle. 
the second that I pull the throttle, you'll see this throttle lock drop down. So this is why we don't touch the throttle after we disengage the choke. So I'm gonna pull the throttle and this black throttle lock is gonna drop down. Keep your eyes on it. Just like that, it clicks down. So now your high idle or your throttle lock is disengaged. That's why we do not touch the throttle after we disengage this until it is running. Okay, now we're gonna go over how to clear a flooded saw. So if the saw does become flooded, now we're gonna show how to clear it. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the scrunch out of the holder. The scrunch has a screwdriver on this end. We're gonna pop the air cleaner off so we can make get access to the spark plug. Air cleaner pops off, spark plug wire, spark plug. We're gonna pull the spark plug wire off and we're gonna remove the spark plug. Break it loose, pull the spark plug out. Look at it, make sure it's not wet, set it to the side. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tip the saw upside down and pull the saw up to 20 times to allow the fuel and oil to come out of the spark plug hole. So we're gonna pull it upside down. The saw will not start because it does not have a spark plug in it. Pull it up to 20 times. Get all that fuel and oil out of there. Once you're done pulling the saw, like I said, inspect the spark plug. If there's any oil or gas residue on there, you can clean it off, making sure you're not getting any lint from the rag on the spark plug itself. Make sure it's in good shape and reinstall the spark plug. Once the spark plug is reinstalled and the cover's back on, you can pull the saw and start it and the flood should be cleared.